Hello, welcome to the Rich and Simple Living. My name is Maria and if you're new here, I vlog all about home life things and mostly cooking, which is what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be doing an air fryer dish today. I, it's a dish I've never ever done before and well I've had the recipe for donkey's years since when I first got married, which is coming up to 40 years ago and it's a pilchard crumble. <laughs> And there it is written, look, on a um, piece of old notepad. It's really crumpled. It's really yellow with age. And I've never, ever tried it. Never. It's a, got oven instructions, but I have never, ever tried it. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to give it a whirl and we're going to see if we can convert it for the air fryer. Now, I'm not going to taste test this. I absolutely hate fish. In fact, I've opened the tin of pilchards in front of me ready and the smell is making me go, Ooh. <laughs> and I can't even see them yet, only the tomato sauce, so I may draft Dean in to deal with that bit. <laughs> so anyway, like I say, it's pilchard crumble and I'm going to do the crumble topping first. So I'm going to just bring you forward so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. So we're going to deal with the crumble. Um, first of all, I'm going to put plain flour in. Now you can use wholemeal or whole wheat flour, plain flour, bit of both, whatever you've got really. I've only got plain flour at the moment, so I'm going to pop some of that in. So I have done four ounces of plain flour and two ounces of margarine so I'm going to bring it down a little bit more there we go I'm going to turn this to fine breadcrumbs hopefully to resemble fine breadcrumbs I should say not actually going to turn into fine breadcrumbs <laughs> so we'll do that I do like these messy dishes, don't I? I get all my hands dirty. I'm not dirty, but sticky. So, yeah, I thought we'll have a bit of a change today from something sweet. We seem to be doing a lot of sweet stuff and it'd be nice to do some savoury things for a bit. And I thought, I've been looking at this recipe for ages, thinking I must have a go at it. But I don't eat fish, but Dean absolutely loves fish. And I don't think there's any fish that he doesn't like. So I thought, well, we'll give it a whirl because if he likes it, then it's quite an inexpensive dish. Because I think my tin of pilchards for a 400 gram tin was, I'm not sure if it was 160 something. It was one something anyway less than two pounds so i thought well that's not too bad because if you're dividing that up between you know three four people then that's not too bad at all and the flour and butter and that you've got all the time so we're going to do that i'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper now i'm not always a big fan of all adding things like this but because it's such a savory dish i'm going to do a little bit of salt i haven't got one of those fancy things where you twist them and that bit of black pepper just mix it in a bit now i've got no fancy gadgets like that i don't think i use them enough to warrant one <laughs> and then i'm going to put in two ounces of a cheddar cheese now it could be any cheese that you like whatever you know suits your taste this is a strong cheddar cheese so i thought it would bring out the flavor in the um, crumble and I don't like strong cheddar, I know I'm only a mild cheddar person, but as I'm not eating it, I thought, well, we'll do it to Dean's taste. So we're just going to mix that in. I've no idea even what this dish is meant to look like because I've got no pictures. So that's that. So that's the crumble already. We'll pop that to one side a minute and I've already greased the dish I think it's a two pint dish this one I wasn't even sure how big the dish was because my recipe doesn't say that not even sure where I got the recipe from 
I've got a feeling it might be from a really old cookbook that I had that fell to pieces. It was one of those, you know, where people send their recipes in and people compile a book from it. So I think it might have been a recipe like that. So I can't really remember. And like I said, I've never tried it. There was no pictures. I don't remember what it looks like. So there couldn't have been pictures. So we'll just say, we'll just go with it. So I'm going to get a fork out of my drawer and I've got to deal with these pilchards. Mm. <laughs> Let's bring you down. So it's the pilchards and the tomato sauce. I reckon um, sardines could perhaps do it as well. Oh. <laughs> oh, yuck. <laughs> oh, dear me. I don't know if I want to touch them. <laughs> I'd never make a chef. No, I'm not sure where the bones are in these to get the bones out. Although you can eat pilchard bones. Let's break them up a bit, shall we? Just imagine them swimming around. <laughs> break them up a bit. The smell is disgusting. And yet, you know, I like to go to um, the docks, like my favourite place, Whitby, to go on the docks there when they're bringing all the catch in. Oh, there's some bones, look. Um, when they're bringing all the fish in and that, and you can walk through the docks and the smell of the fish. I like that, strangely enough. I don't mind that. But, I don't know, it's just this. <laughs> Just seeing all these little rows of bones there. It's a bit Jurassic-ish. <laughs> oh. The very soft bones, I think they're breaking up anyway because I can't find any more. So anyway, yeah, break it up, mix it in. I think that fills that just right, actually, 400 gram 10. It's the ones I got. So it's fitted this basin quite nice. Right, I'm just going behind you to um, wash my hands. That's something I really want to do now, make them smell better. <laughs> so one thing I don't like, one thing I've never liked is fish, ever. Even as a child, I didn't like fish, not even fish fingers. I don't like fish at all. Don't even like watercress. Anything that comes out of water for some reason. <laughs> I think watercress so it's a bit peppery and strong for me. And I certainly don't like um, lava bread. Can't stand that. So there, we've got them breaking up. There will be some bones in there. I managed to get a few out, but you'll have to be careful eating them. So the next thing it says is to beat an egg. So I'm going to beat an egg and put three drops of milk in. So there's three, well not drops, but three tablespoons of milk in. It's a bit awkward left-handed, but we'll probably make a bit of a mess of this. There we are, that'll do. More mess than anything, really. I should have done that first. They're all up perfect. <laughs> but I don't want to show perfection. I want to show how it really is. There we go. Right, so we'll beat that in. We're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper over here, not too much. There we go, just put a bit of salt and pepper over it. Then we're going to pour the egg over the top. It doesn't say to beat it in, it just says to pour it over. I'm not quite sure um, what that's meant to do. We'll double check to be sure. And yeah, break them up. Mix the egg milk, salt, pepper, and mix and pour it over. And then put the crumble on top. Oh. So just to pour it over it. It doesn't say to um, 
mix it in so we'll just leave it as it is then so then it said just to add the crumble i thought though the crumble's going to sink on that i don't know i think what i'll actually do i'm going to get the air fryer out first because i've can't put it out i've got no space so i'll clear this off leave that a minute and i'll get the air fryer out so that we can pour the mix on and put it straight into the air fryer in case it does sink so we'll just go and get that first right i've just warmed the air fryer up a bit so i'll just pop that there bring you down and we'll put the topping on so we'll sprinkle the topping on it sort of goes in i don't know if it's going to be like a crunchy thing i don't really know i'll just do it on the first little bit sunk but the rest hasn't it's sort of gone on okay sitting on it see all right that my hand getting in the way around a bit there we go just move it around a little bit nudge it round so it's a bit level it's not too bad there we go now it is going to be a bit hit and miss how we cook it i'm going to pop it into there I like this dish because it fits quite nice. Just bring up a bit. Um, now it is a low one. It says gas mark four, which I think is equivalent to about a one forty. So I think I'd rather go with the one forty to start with. I was thinking should I go a bit higher and go one fifty? I thought no, it's better to start lower and work my way up if I need to. So we'll go with the 140. I'm going to go for 20 minutes. There we go. So we've got 140, 20 minutes. That's off. We'll see what it's like when it's done. And it's going to be a surprise to me as well as to you. Unless some of you have done it before. I mean, have any of you ever done a pilchard or sardine crumble before? Have you heard of one? <laughs> so yeah we'll leave that go then and we'll come back in 20 minutes well it's beeped um we'll have a look what it's done i can get it out can you see from there bring you down a little bit i think there we go mm, it's not looking too bad but i do think it might need a bit longer i don't know um, if i can bring you over to see because the light I do think it could go a bit longer. It's about there. Actually, it feels a bit set. I wonder if that's the milk and the egg. But it's not golden brown. So maybe, I don't know whether it would need like a 10 degrees higher because I put it on 140, whether it'd be all right on 150 or whether just the extra five minutes at the 140. We'll pop it in. Um... It's all trial and error, isn't it, when you don't really know. You just have to mess around with things, and then when you get it right, just make a note of it. <laughs> so let's have a look. We'll take it back to air fry. Um, I might just blast it on 150, actually, for five minutes. There we are, so on. Oh, turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> Press the wrong button again. I'm always doing this. Back to air fry. 150. Oh, I'll tell you. And what did I say? I'll give you five more minutes, didn't I? Okay, air fry. 150, five minutes. Press the right button, Maria. Off you go. <laughs> 
So I'll smell it if it starts burning. I'll rescue it, but we'll come back and find this because I think it probably should have a bit of a golden top. Most things are supposed to, aren't they, when they go in an oven, especially a crumble. But it looks like it's setting, so it must be working. We'll be back in a minute. Well, it's beeped again, so we'll have a look at it now, see what it's doing. It doesn't really look much different, to be honest with you. I'll bring it there, and you can see. It doesn't really look much different. It's a little golden around the edges, and it is a brown. It's not sort of um, dark brown, but maybe it's not meant to be. I've got no picture of it, so I don't really know what it's meant to look like. And... Um, you know it, it's cooked you can see it's cooked so we'll take it out and we'll leave it cool a bit this is a tricky part taking things out <laughs> well you can if you want the, the watch out and stuff i know I've, I've tried these methods with lifting it with foil and that but i'm a bit wobbly doing that but we'll see then you can get it out He's got asbestos hands. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Oh, thank you. So that's what it looks like. See if I can lift it up. Pop the tea towel around it. There we go. You can see underneath what it looks like. See the uh, pilchards. Now the top of it's like it's like it's set with the egg and the milk so that layer is set and it's sort of springy actually feels quite nice really i'd like to taste it if it didn't have the pilchards underneath it um well if we get it in a bowl hang on it's red aren't oh dear this man is so eager you want you'd think i don't feed him you would he's always eating <laughs> a man with a good appetite that one so we want we want, big, we want a bowl or something so we can sprint out and or a plate yeah so we can see what it looks like oh can't get the staff <laughs> hang on let's bring everybody down so we can see what we're doing rather than coming then let's have a look I should get a bigger spoon, really, I think. Okay. Right, let me just look a bit at the bottom of it. Right, so that's what it looks like. It's definitely cooked through. Looks nice and bouncy. I think if I like fish, I would probably enjoy having a taste of it, but it. yeah, just leave it cool for a bit. <laughs> It's a bit runny in the bottom. There's a little bit of juice, nothing really major. But that's not too bad, actually. I can see some cheese. That's not too bad. But for a first attempt at something that I've never done before and I've never even seen before, that's not bad. I think it'd make a nice supper dish or something like that. So Dean's just going to wait for that to cool down a moment and then he'll taste it and we'll see what he thinks it tastes like. Okay, it's cooled enough so we'll get Dean to taste it. Come up a bit, if you can see. I want to look at this, but don't bring it near me. <laughs> What do you think? Nice. Move over a bit. Can't see me. <laughs> I am not get too close to the fish. Does it taste okay? Flavours there and everything. The, the flavours there. No. And what's the topping like? The crumble. Can you taste the cheese in it? Mm. Yeah. Well, I'll put the stronger cheddar in. Because Dean likes good cheeses and the stronger flavours like I say if it was for me it would be mild cheese but Dean likes that a good flavoured cheese and you like that well, there's, some for tea for cold. Oh, there's plenty there <laughs> so yeah you got a whole bowl to eat there Dean <laughs> but just stop uh, we'll do something savoury try something I've not tried before that recipe has been sitting around for most of my married life and I thought it's time I tried it 
and it wasn't expensive to make i just had to go out and buy a can of pilchers because i hadn't got no fish like that in it's all tuna and stuff i've got but i know dean likes that kind of thing so it wasn't too expensive to buy one and it made a cheap dish so that's it really for today i don't know if any of you have ever done a pilchard crumble <laughs> why did say tuna no. a pilchard crumble oh, there we go <laughs> and uh or anything similar like that let me know in the comments down below if you have oh, <laughs> we'll be back for more in a minute so that's that for now um i might be back now on sunday i might just do a quick one on sunday because um i think it's saint patrick's day on sunday so i might come back then I won't say for definite because it's weekend. I don't normally come on weekends, normally busy doing stuff or having chill time. But if I get the time, I will come on and do something with you on Sunday. If not, I might postpone it to Monday. <laughs> we'll celebrate St. Patrick's Day a day later. But no, I'll try and come on Sunday if possible. If not, you'll definitely see me on Monday. So until you do see me next, take care. Bye.